Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet our Simmer Triangle Shawl. The yarn that I'm using for this tutorial is Mary Maxim Marvelous Chunky. It comes in some beautiful shades, lots to choose from. I've shown the shawl in this beautiful brown with all of these flecks, which is perfect for fall. And for the tutorial, I'm going to show you in this bit lighter shade, so it's a little bit easier to see. And the color is Sweet Stuff, and the yarn is 100% acrylic. So this is a 200 gram ball, and we have 270 yards on a ball. I'll be using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook for this pattern and this is a furls crochet hook and I am using the supernova. So we're going to start with a magic ring. So take the yarn wrapping it around your index finger three times. Take your hook slide it through all three loops grabbing the first loop and pulling it through. We'll now chain four. And this will count as our first treble. So to work a treble, we're gonna yarn over twice, go through the loop, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we'll chain two and we'll work three more trebles in the ring. Okay, and now we'll pull our ring tight. So take your tail. You're gonna notice only one loop's pulling in. Just give it a little tug. It's gonna pull the other loop. Take your tail and pull. Okay, so this is the start of our triangle. So for row two, we're going to chain four and that counts as our first treble. Going to turn and in the very first stitch we're going to work two trebles so yarn over twice pull up a loop yarn over pull through two pull through two pull through two okay and now we'll chain two and in our corner, we're going to work three trebles. chain two and three trebles all in the chain two space. So every time we get to our corner chain two space, we will be doing three trebles, chain two, and three trebles. Chain two. And in our turning cha chain, we'll work three trebles. So I'm just gonna speed these ones up a little bit. Okay, so you can see we're starting to get our shape. So we're always starting the same way, which is going to be a chain four. So this is row three. And that counts here and throughout as 
a treble, and we're always adding two in the first stitch. chain two. So now in every chain one space, we'll be doing our treble cluster, which is three trebles and a chain two. So as we get more chain two spaces, we're going to have more of those trebles, chain twos worked across. So in our next chain two space, we're going to work three trebles. and a chain two. Okay, so work that until you get to your corner and we're at our corner here. So we'll work three trebles, a chain two and three trebles all in this chain two space. So I'm gonna speed it up again a little bit. So I have my three trebles, chain two, and then three trebles. So we're making these big chunky clusters, chain two, and in our next chain two space, we'll work three trebles and a chain two. Chain two. Okay, so always when we're getting to the end, we're working three trebles in that turning chain. So yarn over twice, and I'm gonna speed this up to finish off my three trebles. One, two, three. And we're really seeing our shape take form. So I'm gonna work through row four with you. So we're starting off with a chain four and two trebles. chain two and then in each chain two space we'll be working three trebles and a chain two so it doesn't matter how many chain two spaces you have you'll be working your treble clusters and a chain two across them. And then once you get to your chain two corner, we'll work our three trebles chain two and three troubles. Chain two. Okay, 
so now we're just going to continue up this side three trebles chain two three trebles chain two and finishing in the turning chain with three trebles and we will just be working this repeat now throughout the pattern so each row ends up with an additional cluster in between our start and our corner to get a shawl the desired size that i have worked up it's a total of 62 by 27 i've worked a total of 20 rows so you'll now repeat row four until you have a total of 20 rows and then we'll meet up to show you the next step. Here is the brown that I'm working on and this just gives you a visual of how it's gonna be nice and chunky with these big chunky stitches in the trebles and this is our point and this is how it's going to look. Okay, so I've been working on my shawl and you can count your rows. If you just look here, it's really easy to count going down the center so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty rows in total and you can also count your clusters just to make sure you're on track as well okay so i have a total of 40 clusters so if you count up the side 20 up this side 20 up this side and this is our center right here so next I'm going to show you how to finish the row off with single crochets. Okay, so we're finishing up here with our last treble. I'm going to chain one and turn. Add two single crochet and then a single crochet in each treble and then two single crochet in the chain two spaces. So then you're working a single into each treble and then two singles in the chain two space. So work that all the way down to our corner. So when you get down to the corner, we're going to work three single crochet, a chain one, and then three single crochet. Then you'll just continue working the same way up the side. So I'll continue with working this across and I'll just meet you at the end. So we're going a single per double and two singles in that chain two space. Okay, so in our final turning chain, we'll work three singles to finish it off. And then you can fasten off and weave in your tails. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to add the fringe. So this part is optional and really you can make your shawl any length that you want as well. So if you're wanting to add some fringe to it, what you're going to need to do is measure out. If you wanted the length that I'm showing in all of the photos, you're going to want it about 15 inches in length. So just take your measuring tape, measure out 15 approximately. I like to pull from the outside of the ball because it will be much straighter. You can always steam it at the end, but pulling from the outside will just give, if you pull from the inside, it's going to be a little bit um, wavy. So I just start rolling off strands. I like to just do about 10 in a pile and then I find as I, I go more, I can get off track with my length. So if I go with about 10,
If I go with about 10, then I know I'm probably not going to get too off track with my length. So there's 10. Now I have 103 stitches up each side. So 206 in total. Plus I have that chain one down here at the end. So I am going to put fringe in every other stitch and I'm going to go the entire length on both sides. So I'm going to want over 200 strands of yarn. So about 202 to 208, depending on how you space your pieces out. But I'm gonna do two pieces for every other stitch. I'm just gonna trim these guys. And I'll just show you how I'm going to attach the fringe and then we can I'll work away on all of it off camera. So I'm gonna take two strands. So cut out your 200 strands or more. And then what we'll do is find that center chain one. One, two, three, so it's going to be about right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put my first two right in the center. So now if you add another want piece right next here, you're going to evenly go up to your last stitch and you'll need a little bit more yarn. But if you skip this one and go to this one, you will um, need a little bit less, about 202 strands, and you won't end in the final stitch. So you'll end in the second last stitch. But you may find it is a little tight to get the yarn right in there. So you may want to go to that next stitch. So in that case, you'll need about 202 strands of yarn. Okay, so you're just going to put it in like this and pull. So what I like to do is fill in, put all the fringe on and then you can trim you can steam your shawl you can trim your ends so I'm not showing you this one blocked it is recommended to block the shawl just because it will give it its nice shape and stretch it out to its measurement I'm just going to steam block mine so you can do either either or. So let's just talk a little bit about that. So you can wet block it by submerging the shawl into some lukewarm, lukewarm water with a little bit of dish soap or wool wash. You can soak it, um, rinse out any soap, then squeeze out as much water as you can. You can roll it in a towel just to get some more excess water out and then just pin it out to measurements on some large blocking mats and pin it all out and make sure you get it nice and stretched out. Or you can steam block it if you're in a rush and you don't wanna to go to all the extra work. You can lay it out on your bed and just gently, just be careful because this is acrylic. You don't want to place the steamer too close. You just wanna use it to help sort of flatten it out. And I just shaped it out, you know, just on my bed, just so I could do it quickly. And then this one I'm wanting to start on the fringe. Now you could still block it with the fringe attached. I prefer generally to block it before I add the fringe, but you could block it after the fringe is added as well. So what I'll do once all the fringe is attached, I'm just gonna steam block mine and then I'm going to trim up the tails just to make sure that all of the ends are the same. But you can have them sort of some shorter, some longer. It's really whatever look you prefer. So I'm gonna continue with the fringe off camera, going up both sides, just doing that every other stitch. As you can see, this fringe is nice and long. So if you don't want it that long, you could certainly alter the length as well. 
Okay, so as I worked my fringe, I allowed it to go in that ombre effect, the same as when you're working it. You can completely mix up your pieces, but I just thought that looked really nice to keep the ombre effect going throughout the fringe. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.